So I wanted to share how we are approaching sizing um, with this WebPrints design system. Um, in the past, we have created sizes for every single component. So if, you know, it was a large, say, enterprise si size system, we would have, you know, possibly extra small to 2XL, um, you know, maybe not for every single component, but for a large number of them would have um, various sizes to account for a wide variety of use cases and page densities. So um, we're taking a different approach now with sizing to utilize Figma's component properties and instance swap features with preferred values. So one problem we were running into with creating all of those sizes for various components is that when you did an instance swap um, property on a component, they all had to be the same. So for example, if I set this icon to, you know, left slot and um, because, you know, we could remove the avatar option you see here and do and set that preferred value to avatar, um, but we need all of these sizes for this component specifically. So um, if I set that instance swap property to left slot, it's going to reduce it to the exact same size as this because they have to be the same. So to me, this is a limitation and um, I have found it a bit frustrating at times um, because, you know, for this component specifically, I could, you know, s cut this component in half if size wise if I was able to set the avatar to swap and keep, maintain that size. Um, so an approach we're taking is we're fleshing out the sizes for all of our base components, essentially our most atomic components, you know, including like our avatars, our icons, our content component, our buttons, um, like you can see here, our, our button groups and our action tags. Um, that also includes like our uh, uh, inputs, like you can see down here, we've got three sizes available. And, you know, just some other more atomic elements um, we're doing that for. And because of that, we're able to have one size for our other components. A good example of that is our input control component. So we've got this checkbox here. And we tell our designers, if you want to change the size, just change the size of the nested components themselves. And the only rule that we, you know, kind of are locked in on with some rare use, like rare exceptions, is that just making sure that these are equal. Each, si each size is the same. So if I want to swap this to small, I'm going to make them both small. Now, some of our components, like our content component, has a wide range of sizes for various use cases, but um, our checkbox only goes from small to large. So the biggest this component can be is large. Um, you know, we, we definitely say they have to match, so you're not going to pair a large uh, input control with a, like a display small content because that looks wonky. It's that's they need to match because um, we, you know, a combination of our line height, font size and our button heights um, for our sizing strategy, all of our small items work together. All of our large items work to go work together. So on and so forth. So um, another example of this is the list component. So our list component in the past has been absolutely bonkers. It's just been a really huge one because there's so much to do you can do with it. And um, we've also, you know, we've flushed out a variety of sizes. And then on top of that, we've also, you know, established like what can be in the left slot or in the right slot because we had all those sizes and we wanted to make it really easy to use at the parent level but it actually ended up complicating things more um, because it was confusing if you set 
if you set it as like large at the parent level and then maybe you accidentally sent something to extra small but it didn't change at the parent level it still says small and then you have to kind of go back and troubleshoot and make sure everything matches anyways so we found it much easier just to say hey forget about it at the parent level just like make sure all of your nested components are the same size within it so that has been much easier and the only difference between this top row and this bottom row is the need for a border. So, um, you know, if we didn't need, if we didn't have a situation where we didn't need a border for our list component, we could ax that out entirely. Now you can see I have kind of dictated the left slot a bit. Um, and that was just to make it easier so designers didn't have to go in and make sure that this was center aligned and this was top left aligned. And... Um, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I could definitely do a, probably a, an instant swap for the standalone and an instant swap for the contained, um, contained meaning it's, um, it's in line with our typography, standalone meaning it's in line with our button heights. Um, that, that is a strategy I may consider, I might... <laughs> To do so that yeah but because our because all of these are essentially the same size what I'm able to do with this right slot is set the instant swap I've already got it set over here you can see this is right slot and I can set preferred values because they're all the same size um, so I can come in here and you know you can see I've got these options available so not that designers can't swap in anything else, but these are what's preferred. This is what you're going to be using most often. So if I come over here and, you know, I'm just excited because I can finally use this feature because, you know, with creating multiple sizes in every component, it was just like completely useless. Uh, but now I can actually set this and um, it will swap in what is top left what is most top left in your matrix and for our button component that is the primary extra small so when that gets swapped in again it's just a matter of making sure it's the same size setting that to small oh so there is a bit of finesse that needs to happen every now and then especially with like swapping in the content component because our top most left here is the like display extra large. Um, it's not uncommon, and honestly, it's probably more best practice to list your your most left column of components to be your default size. Um, and I'll probably go back and do that so it's not as a dramatic of a shift when doing that. So when, let me switch this to, I forgot what size, I set the default to so small. So I'm gonna swap this to small, right align, and then I just need to go in and fix some of the auto layout stuff. So I'm gonna set this to hug and this to hug, and then there we go. We've got our right, all right, swap content. And you know, if I'm a designer and I'm making a I might make this a local component just to keep it um, where I need it and maybe make a group of them. So it will go, it will default back to this. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how, that's how we're approaching sizing now is just utilizing, you know, our nested components so that we can take advantage of the instant swap feature and preferred values. Um, we have found this to be really helpful it keeps our file sizes down it's much easier to maintain and stay organized um, it's been much easier for designers to switch sizes um, and, and for the design panel to be less confusing um, this may not be a new way of doing sizing if you've been doing this for a while please comment and about any you know pitfalls you've run into doing this um, over a longer period of time than we have or you know if you are utilizing a 
completely different strategy. I would love to hear about it. Um, but this is what we'll be doing and it's been helpful so far and I hope this is helpful um, for you all. So uh, thanks for listening.